today as you know fire has become a very popular word many of them are actually talking about early retirement because they are unhappy with their jobs what is the worst mistake you've ever made for the first 5 years my portfolio was red late 2013 early 2014 the market went up from one day to the next the gain in the portfolio was much more than the amount i was investing each month i i usually say invest like your ass is on fire but i'm not sure if it's proper you can cut that out <laughs> This is Pattu, a physics professor who teaches personal finance. His calculators and blogs have helped thousands of Indians achieve their financial goals. But today, he tells us his own journey of achieving financial independence in 2018 and how he planned for it. So I'm known uh, today by most people as Pattu. Okay. But my full name is Pattabi Raman. I am a faculty in the physics department at IIT Madras. Okay. I was born in Chennai. and i have spent most of my life in an area of chennai called mailapur all i ever wanted to do as a child was to dream about uh, maybe writing okay. uh, or astronomy okay. or things about science and so on so that has been my uh, goal in life okay. to some extent i have achieved my dream i think sir uh, many of our uh, viewers may or may not know about this uh, but then you have been a very significant contributor to financial literacy in india to the point that even sebi has recognized your work it will be really helpful if you can talk about uh your website free fincal and why did you decide to educate investors through your learnings free fincal started uh, because of uh, an autoimmune condition called myasthenia gravis okay i was detected with it in uh, september 2012 okay and uh, i was not able to do any work for almost 2 years i needed something to you know get me up and go- running slowly when i started writing articles more and more diy investors started to like it Okay. and i realized that there is a actual demand for such a thing hmm. and one thing led to another and uh, that uh, helped me forget my condition and i was able to you know become a little more focused in at work as well as in my hobby the first time the actual phrase retirement planning entered my head was i would say 2009 or so i think i should give you a little bit of a background about why i started i was a head in the clouds academic i knew nothing about finance and i knew nothing about household management a few days after i got my first tenured salary my father fell sick okay. and soon we recognized that it was a f- rare form of blood cancer called multiple myeloma okay and uh, he was hospitalized without insurance and within a few days it, the bill went to a lakh okay. and i had no money and uh, so thankfully uh, my brother in law you know uh, came to my rescue and he said i'll give you uh, the money you don't have to give me any interest or something pay me back when you can and uh, i had to go back to him again and i had to go back to him one more time so it uh, totaled to about almost 3 lakhs in a very very short span of time yeah. that is when i started realizing that that should never happen to me again and then i started reading articles on the internet and one of the very early personal finance blogs that did very well is jago investor that was where again and again that word inflation came in and once i realized that inflation is the key to beat i started my sip journey my mutual fund sip journey with 1500 bucks for the first 5 years from june 2008 to late 2013 uh, my portfolio was red it was uh, the returns were zero one part of me said i was doing something very wrong but the other part of me which kept you know me uh, stay invested was that look i should not uh, be in the situation of debt again late 2013 early 2014 the market went up from one day to the next the gain in the portfolio was much more than the amount i was investing each month so okay. that was happening for a few days and a few months and it kept going it taught me that if you want to win in the equity market you have to be patient there will be a lot of uh, poor months a lot of drought then suddenly it will rain a lot but if you want to be there in the right place at the right time when it rains a lot you need to stay through that stay invested through the drought uh, so sir you mentioned about the calculator so can you just explain to us more in detail how you build that calculator what were the components you uh, took into consideration while building that calculator so as you know uh, a retirement calculator has got uh, two you know requirements that okay. is the uh, outputs one you should tell us what is the target corpus okay. and two you should tell us what is the investment amount required for that target corpus so to first calculate the target corpus you should know what your expenses are your current expenses are right you don't have to take into account the tuition fees that you pay for your children because 
by the time you retire they are going to be you know working on their own so and they are independent they will be they don't they are not going to be depending on you only the ba- essential expenses for example uh, groceries uh, mobile charging cable internet those are the essentials that you going to the stay with you throughout your life and that number should be evaluated every year okay because one year uh, uh, to another there will be differences in your lifestyle positive as well as negative correct suddenly people buy cars Hmm. suddenly people will scale up their mobile phones you don't want to scale down later on right the, the goal of retirement planning is to maintain that level before right. you make a big spend just think okay a little bit so first is to refine the expenses and then is to define an inflation amount okay. what is your current inflation many people make the mistake of assuming that the inflation is the same as reported by the government Okay. Right, four percent, five percent, six percent. But if you actually look at your lifestyle over the past five years or ten years, your lifestyle inflation would be close to, I would say, eight percent to ten percent. And of course, they will s- slow down a little bit in the, you know, after retirement. But at least until retirement, the expenses will increase at that. Uh, at least at seven percent, I would say, is a reasonable, uh, you know, input. Using those assumptions, you find out what is the corpus required. Okay. And for that corpus required, you assume some return. and then find out what is the monthly investment required the moment you recognize the right asset classes you have to start investing and invest 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 so i i usually say invest like your ass is on fire but i'm not sure if it's proper <laughs> you can cut that out but you have to invest like that apart from retirement planning did you fix a time that beyond this i don't want to work and i want to be financially independent i would say i'm extremely lucky to be working where i'm working okay so i have never thought about early retirement or even retirement but that's an interesting question you ask and i would like to um, give you a take my opinion on that today as you know fire has become a very popular word yeah i would say many of them are actually talking about early retirement because they are unhappy with their jobs they are frustrated with their work life balance and they are working too hard they are not able to enjoy life or they are they, they know they are tired and they want to get rid of that but do they really have a plan of what they want to do after they retire i would say not many have i would recommend first uh, aim for financial independence and normal retirement okay that is enough and have a balance between your spending and investing because there are certain things that you can do only when you're young so as a thumb rule i would say that somebody who is planning for normal retirement normal retirement today is 55 okay or maybe even 50 so somebody aiming for normal retirement should aim to invest 75% of their monthly expenses but somebody who wants early retirement should aim for two times to three times of monthly expense that's not always possible we see lot of debates and lot of uh, people coming on youtube and saying that buying a house is not necessary it's it's more like uh, it should not be done right what are your thoughts about it so this is a very subjective thing and it depends on a person's experience i'm not as emotional about buying a property as many other people are many other people i know are they've always lived in rent and they faced uh, terrible land loss who uh, middle of the night they will come and say you have to you know uh, get out of the house as soon as possible next week and so on they'll keep moving from place to place so then they become very emotional about having their own roof absolutely fine you have to be emotional about it i'm just saying be also emotional about your retirement and i would recommend people to do it in their early 30s they want to buy a house do it in their early 30s not in the uh, early 20s or la- even late 20s that is the time for you to get into the investing habit once you get into the investing habit then you can afford like you rightly said 30% of take home 35% of take home is absolutely fine but make sure that another 30% goes to investing also savings, savings yeah. and investing as well like you rightly pointed out buying a home is definitely one of the emotional decision decisions we take in life right but then similar to buying a house another emotional decision which is there in life is uh, is is having a child right what do you think that how much financial planning should play a role before a couple decides to you know expand the family oh this is a very difficult question it's also a dangerous question to answer definitely you don't need to worry too much about having the first child and i think uh, i've realized that our elders were right our elders used to say get the first child as early as possible i've come to realize now after ma- making this mistake because my son was born 8 years after marriage for me should you have the second child or not is a very dang- uh, dangerous uh, you know subject to broach but that's where probably the finances will come into play 
and i think you should have the right level of income to you know support the second child as well because you can't say i'm i will only you know uh, fund my first child's uh, post graduate and uh, education and not the second child's and so on that kind of decisions can't be made one more thing which i want to understand is a lot many times you see when the salary increases people also increase try and increase their lifestyle or end up adding uh, more expenses do you personally take care of it that such expenses do not come into play when you're planning your uh, financial independence how do you control those expenses so i was quite ca- conscious about it in the early years and uh, having a partner who is financially compatible with you and who also thinks the same way also makes a big difference so once uh, i asked my wife if i give you 10 lakhs what will you do with it she thought for it for 10 minutes thought about it for 10 minutes and she said i don't know i have no idea i said, can't can't you think of one place where you will spend 10 lakhs i said no and she said what will you do and i also thought for a long time and uh, i also couldn't think of something that i you know uh, i would spend it on okay so and said i will just invest it so that is the kind of we had a frugal mindset match right of course i'm not saying everybody should be frugal because frugality is not something that you can teach people either okay. you have it or you don't what i like to say is that okay if you want to live it up and uh, enjoy life then tell yourself uh, how is it going to impact your future okay uh, often i think of our management our uh, money management as a water filled balloon so if you take a water filled balloon and press it in one point it will bulge at some other point right we are going to press but the bulge may be up behind us we should go around and see where the bulge is so the every uh, you know decision we make today whether it is to buy a house or an expensive car or an expensive phone it will have some impact down the line and till date uh, do you only explore uh, mutual funds and the uh, the regular nps investment or have you also started exploring other uh, instruments for your portfolio nps and mutual funds are the primary uh, weights in the portfolio I also have a little bit of PPF exposure. Okay. And uh, in the last few years I've also started building a small uh, stock uh, portfolio. Sir, there are a lot of people who are aspiring to achieve financial independence and as early as possible. What is your advice to them? There are many people who believe that building wealth, you know, the people talk about magic of compounding and so on. Many people believe that uh returns play a big role in it yes of course naturally a higher return will give you, you know better wealth but return is not something that you can directly control but what you can control is the time over which you invest okay and what is even more important is the actual amount you invest so one thing i found out early is that when i was making my retirement calculators i made what is known as a cost of delay calculator uh, if you delay your retirement by let's say 1 year or 2 year or 3 year and for every year of delay the amount that you need to invest will uh, grow at a rate of 12% to 14% so the cost of delay is increasing at a rate higher than inflation so let's take an example of this cost of delay calculator okay. and let's assume a person is 35 and wants to retire at the age of 60 okay and uh, uh, expects to live about uh, 80 up to 80 so let's assume that the current monthly expenses average expenses per month is about 40000 and if you assume the inflation is 7% so the total corpus would be about 4.8 crores if they start right away uh, there's a very manageable 36700 so it's just below the uh, annual monthly expenses you expect you assume 40000 and the investment required is about 36700 if you delay this by 5 years it will shoot up to uh, 63000 Oh, okay. so that's like 11.4% increase year on year right so that's what i meant uh, by uh, cost of delay is much more expensive than inflation itself the okay. inflation exp- increases your expenses right but the cost of delay would increase your monthly investment required at a much much greater rate okay. and therefore it's much more deadly which okay. why you have to start planning right what is probably the worst mistake you've ever made while planning your finances and which you would suggest everyone to take care of i'm afraid i don't have an interesting answer for that in because i have not made any spectacular investment decisions nor have i made any worst or abysmal investment decisions things have been more or less you know normal or moderate average kind of decisions for me which is what i would like to emphasize to everybody that it's absolutely possible to build wealth in a boring way you don't need to you know run around trading uh, buy this and that and just do normal things 
focus on your income and keep your expenses low and invest like a machine you're there and consistently consistent thank you for watching and supporting our channel if you like the stories we tell here's your chance to be a part of it if you or anybody you know has an interesting financial journey to share then please fill the form in the pinned comment below and we'll get in touch with you